Is it through <laughs> the thing about you road testing the kind of the posing pouch? The posing pouch? The, but, well, the... <laughs> <laughs> Before we move on, we must also just mention uh, Wolf of Wall Street, which you yeah. are a genius in. Yeah, and they, they, obviously, a lot of people... <laughs> a lot of people have seen that movie. It's done really, really well here. And again, it's one of those things that uh, a lot of that character but he wasn't on the page. It was stuff that you came up with. Yeah, now, look, Terrence Winter, the writer, when a writer writes a scene and gives dialogue to a character, and it starts off with... They're in a five-star restaurant. He pulls out a bump of Coke, takes it, orders martinis uh, until they drop, then says, uh, hey, hey, young man, how many times a week you jack off? Great. And also, let me tell you this, the secret to this business is hookers and cocaine. I mean, talk about the roof being taken off. I'm just like, well, who's this guy? <laughs> <laughs> the vernacular. It became, it became, the imagination ran. What is the thing you're doing in the, you know, with the banging and the yeah, humming? What is that? Yeah. Is it a meditation technique, or...? <laughs> That's something I do... ...before the... <laughs> <laughs> He's learned how. No. <laughs> I've been doing it ever since. You, <laughs> you already look more successful. Yeah. <laughs> That's something I'll do before scenes, um, to relax myself, get my voice to drop. Um, and I've been doing it for a while, but it's just something I do to relax myself, get out of my head. Um, and I was doing it before the scene, and then I'd start the scene. We do five takes. I'm happy. Martin's happy. We're about to move on. And before we moved on, Leonardo raised his hand. He goes, hey, hang on a second. He goes, what's that thing you're doing before the scene? And I told him. And he goes, what if you put that in the scene? I was like, yeah, great. So the next scene, I started it off, then gave him my Mark Hanna spiel and didn't know if it was going to come back. And it hit me in my head. I was like, oh, well, now get him on the same rhythm because now he understands past the torch. Uh-huh. And then started it off. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, did you do it before you came out here? No. Uh, on the way down the hallway, I was sure <laughs> humming and making noises. I wouldn't beat my chest, but I was definitely fine. <laughs> <laughs> Will you be doing it in the limo on the way to the uh, Oscars? Probably. Yeah, I like to think of, I like to think of you doing it in the limo. I'll find some sort of rhythm. It's different every <laughs> Look at him. Every he's, character he's obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> and now, cocaine. <laughs> supposed to play Snoop Dogg, right? right. Originally right. in this movie? <laughs> right. But I changed that. I, I came up with a name. I'm lingerie in the movie. <laughs> and you said, I had an epiphany last night at 4.30. <laughs> My character's not Snoop. My character's name is Ray. Short for... Lingerie. Little Mr. Texas, uh, your mom entered you in... Was this a pageant or what kind of a competition was this? Bandera, Texas, every year we're going to uh, give the old find who had it. was little Mr. Texas. It's a pageant. It's a, you walk out on a horse, you answer some questions, you show your wardrobe, you howdy, ma'am, and do all that stuff. Put the picture up of little Mr. Texas there. And so this is something she was very proud of. She even referred to you as little Mr. Texas for much of your young life. Every single morning after this, uh, Little Mr. Texas pageant that I won, uh, I would come to breakfast and to get the day started, mom would point to this picture that was framed on the wall, that picture, and go, look at you. There's little Mr. Texas right there. Good morning, son. So I'm like, little Mr. Texas, this is great. Every single morning for 18 years. Well, remember that was in 1977. 2020, about one year ago, I came across that picture. I was like, let me Little Mr. Texas, how about that? Well, I zoomed in on the little plate on the trophy, and if you have a look at it, it does not say Little Mr. Texas, it says <laughs> runner up. <laughs> I wonder if I'd be sitting here talking to you right now. If I would have had the life I had, if I would have gone up thinking I was runner up instead of what my mom liked me to me I was Little Mr. Texas. What I do? <laughs> that is unbelievably good. Yeah. You just made a movie, and this is mind-boggling to me, with Jimmy Buffett and Snoop Dogg. Yeah. <laughs> How did the movie even get made? Yeah, right? Yeah. It was one big song, I'll tell you that. <laughs> would one you, was day it fun? Told... It seems like it would be fun. No, it was a blast. I mean, we got away with I can't believe I got paid for that one. Was... <laughs> Is the title of the movie, Let's Just Find the Most Fun Guys in the World and Put Them Together and Let Them Go? Pretty close, but in two words, it's called The Beach Bum. <laughs> <laughs>
You and Snoop Dogg hit it off, I would imagine? Yeah, he's a prince of a man. Yeah, he, Snoop, I know right? him well, yeah. He's great. He's a prince lot of fun. Of Always fun. Yeah. yeah. Did you hang out, or was it just business? No, we hung out. It was never just business. Mm. No, it was fun the entire time. <laughs> what, was, what was the most notable thing Snoop did during your work time together? He snooped me. He did snoop you? You know, you know what being snooped is? I think I have a pretty good yeah, idea. Yeah, I got fairly and decently you got snooped. Would you get snooped? Yeah. What's the weirdest thing you've done to make money? It's also illegal. So I'm not telling. It could come back to haunt me. All right. Uh, besides making love, showering, swimming, or playing bongos, what is something else you enjoy doing naked? <laughs> Cooking if we're not deep frying anything. <laughs> Is it true the thing about you road testing the kind of the posing pouch? The posing pouch? The but well the <laughs> <laughs> Is that, that what they're called? <laughs> it is the posing pouch. You don't call them that in America, that we those little things that you just about get things in with a string right? around the back. And it's a pose. The slightest move and yeah, everything's but, out. Yeah. <laughs> I read something where you, were, you walked around to make sure that it wasn't falling out of... of it, no, it was composed. What I did do, which a lot of us did, is you put one of those on and all of a sudden you find your, your, your body kind of gets a little inverted. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta really loosen up because this is a guy who lives in this thing and has to feel really loose and with it. So I remember going, and I wasn't the only one that did this. You go, I, I have to walk out there amongst the crew and have small time, normal conversations. Like, so how, how, how you doing? <laughs> you have to lunch. <laughs> hey, did you see the game this weekend? I, 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 um, try to have some small talk in this thong without flinching. I, and it was hard. I, I, did. Because you, <laughs> I wasn't, but it was. <laughs> you said it now. You said it. Now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was. Thank you for that. <laughs> Getting ready for that role, the first night, I went up for a, uh, a dress rehearsal and hair and makeup, and I stepped out of the trailer, and Rick uh, Linklater, the director, comes up and goes, this is great. Look like Wooderson, this is great. And he goes, listen, man, I know you're not supposed to work tonight, but we got a scene at the top notch. It's Friday night. Um, you know, what do you, I think Wooderson might be there, you know, trolling for chicks or what have you, you know what I mean? And he goes, I go, yeah, he would be there. And he goes, what do you think, would Wooderson maybe be attracted to the redheaded intellectual? You know, because Wooderson's been around school, he's kind of been with all the typical beauties. What about the redheaded intellectual? You think he'd be into that? I was like, yeah. And I said, give me 30 minutes, let me take a walk. And he goes, okay, so I took a walk. Come back, I, we played verbal ping pong, I told him my ideas, and he told me his, and he goes, wanna shoot it? I went. Okay, <laughs> so boom, we go up to the set. I get in the car and I'm like, I'm nervous. First scene ever on film and right before we're about to shoot, I've got friends in the car, I'm going. I've been listening to this live, more live Doors album and there's this, in, in between two of the songs, Morrison goes, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> you ever heard that recording? Oh, of course. Right, the four. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> so right before we're about to go, I'm like, what is Wooderson, what, what, what is Wooderson about? What's he about? And I go, man, he's about four things. He's about, you know, his car. He's about getting high. He's about rock and roll and picking up chicks. And I go, I'm in my car. I'm high as a kite. I'm listening to rock and roll. Action. And there's the chick. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> That's amazing. Three out of four. That's fantastic. Does Matthew know that he plays a special part in your life? Uh, no, probably not. Please, I play a special part in your life. Yeah. Can't wait to hear this. Tell us. My wife and I sleep with you almost every <laughs> night. Yes. It's an app called Calm. And I turn it on, and I just hear, well, hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Matthew McConaughey. I'm going to tell you a bedtime story. And the truth about it is my wife, who's from Argentina, she always goes like, you have the man talking again. <laughs> <laughs> the man is talking in the bed again, Mike. <laughs> which just might rekindle that sense of wonder. Oh. <laughs> wake up, wake up. <laughs> One story about your dad, the, the bet, the bet involving your brother, do you know the story I mean? The, the bicycle? Yeah, the, the motorcycle, motorcycle. The, motor, the motorcycle. Oh, yeah yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Another way my dad did great business. Um, <laughs> this is, our <laughs> upbringings are so similar. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> are you getting laid? <laughs> I'm 
Yeah. Every time I come on this show, I get abused by Hollywood stars. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> this, 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 no, this is a great story. I'm going to sit back and enjoy. Yeah, yeah, this is a great story. This is a great story. So, my dad's at a ranch one time with his friends, and they've been deer hunting all day, and it's late at night. They're sitting out in the barn drinking and stuff, and so all of a sudden the subject comes up of how high everybody can pee. You know, how high on the wall, right? And he's got this buddy named Jim who's about six foot six, and they're playing cards looking around. And my dad sees this old BMX bike, and we couldn't afford a BMX bike. Now, my middle brother had been wanting a BMX motorcycle, but we couldn't afford it. There's this old CRX 80 over there. And dad says, well, you know, uh, Jim, my son, he could pee over your head on the wall. And he goes, oh, there's no way he can do that. And he goes, yeah, he can. I'll bet you. I'll, I'll, bet, the, I'll bet the motorbike on it. And the guy goes, oh, there's no way. I'm six foot six. Pop gets in the car, drives an hour and a half back into town, wakes my 12-year-old brother up in his tidy whities <laughs> gets him out of bed. What do you got to do when you get woke up in the middle of the night as a kid? You got to pee, right? My dad says, no, 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 no. No, you're not going to do that. <laughs> Actually, get in the car of me. Water. Get in the car. No, have a sip on this beer because we're heading. We're about to go. We're about to go get yourself a motorcycle, buddy. So, Pat's sitting there, tidy wise. He ride an hour and a half back. Get back at four in the morning, and brings my brother in the barn. They put Jim up against the wall. Jim marks the mark at six foot six, and my dad says, "Go ahead, boy." Pew! <laughs> Pew <laughs> by a foot. Put the CRX 100 in the back of the truck, got home, my dad, my brother's first motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> we love your ball. Yeah.